The solar system is home to a lot of moons. Some orbit planets, others orbit dwarf planets, and some even orbit asteroids. But one thing's for certain, there are a lot of moons in the solar system. And in this video, I'll be talking about all of them. The No Moons Not all objects in the solar system have moons. Some good examples are Mercury, Venus, Ceres, Varuna, Ixion, and Sedna. These objects do not have any moons orbiting them, so we can now move on. Earth Earth is the planet we call home, and has one moon. It's most commonly referred to as the moon, but some people call it Luna. Luna is responsible for our tides, stable axial tilt, and 24 hour long days. Luna was formed when a Mars-sized object named Theia collided with Earth 4.5 billion years ago. Another fun fact about Luna is that she's slowly drifting away from us at a rate of 1.5 inches or 3.78 centimeters per year, and will slowly abandon us in 5 billion years, leaving us moonless forever. Although, I would rather panic about the fact that the sun will literally eat us by that time. Mars Mars, also known as the Red Planet, has two tiny moons named Phobos and Deimos. They both orbit really close to Mars. Phobos orbits 9,377 kilometers or 5,827 miles from Mars, meanwhile Deimos orbits 23,460 kilometers or 14,880 miles from Mars. They were believed to have been captured asteroids that were flung from the asteroid belt by Jupiter and captured by Mars around 1 to 2.7 billion years ago. Phobos and Deimos have very different fates. Phobos is slowly drifting towards Mars, while Deimos is slowly drifting away from Mars. 10 million years from now, Phobos will drift too close to Mars and be torn apart in orbit, forming a beautiful ring system similar to that of Saturn's, while poor little Deimos will drift too far away from Mars for Mars' gravity to hold onto it. The Asteroid Belt Some asteroids have their own moons too. For example, Ida. Ida is a large asteroid in the Asteroid Belt that has a little moon orbiting around it named Dactyl. Another example is Didymos. Didymos has a moon named Dimorphos. You may know Dimorphos as the target of the Dark Mission NASA did a year ago. There's really nothing else to talk about these asteroid moons, so uh, let's move on. Jupiter Jupiter is the most massive planet in the solar system, and with great mass comes a great amount of moons. Jupiter has about 95 moons at the time of recording this video, and that number might change as our observations become better over time. Most of the moons of Jupiter are just captured asteroids, with an exception of four large moons. The four large moons of Jupiter are Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Starting off with Io, it's the closest moon to Jupiter, and is one of the most geologically active objects in the solar system due to tidal forces exerted on it by Jupiter and the other moons. Europa is the next moon moon. It is believed to have an underground ocean with more water than Earth. We think the theoretical ocean would be heated by Europa's core. Next up is Ganymede. Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system even being larger than the planet Mercury. It has a pretty weak magnetic field, making it the only moon in the solar system with a magnetic field. My friend Universe Facts talked about this in one of his videos, so I recommend you check his channel out. It is also believed to have an underground ocean like Europa. Callisto is the outermost large moon of Jupiter. It's the most cratered object in the solar system due to its geologically dead nature. Saturn. The beautiful ring planet has 146 known moons so far and the number of moons will only continue to add up as our instruments get better at detecting small objects. Most of these 146 moons are just captured asteroids and ring particles, with an exception of seven large moons. Those seven large moons are Titan, Rhea, Iapetus, Dione, Thetis, Enceldus, and Mimas. I'll just be talking about Titan and Enceldus since I don't want this video to last 30 minutes. Anyway, Titan is the second largest moon in our solar system and still bigger than Mercury. It's also the only moon in the solar system that has a thick atmosphere. Titan has tons more interesting geological features that I won't be able to cover in this video, so let me know if you want a full video on that topic. Anyway, Enceldus is one of Saturn's other moons. Like Europa, it's also believed to have an underground ocean. The jets of water erupting from Enceldus' south pole serves as even more evidence of a subsurface underground ocean on Enceldus. Uranus Uranus has a pretty strange axial tilt that makes her seem like she's spinning sideways. What's cool is that even her rings and major moons follow this sideways tilt. Uranus has 27 moons that we know of so far. Like the other Jovian planets, most of its moons are just captured asteroids, except for five moons. Those moons are Titania, Oberon, Umbriel, Ariel, and Miranda. Not much is really known about them, but some speculate that, that they all have a subsurface ocean, except Miranda. Neptune Neptune is the farthest out planet from the sun, orbiting near the inner edge of the Kuiper Belt. It has 14 moons. One of those moons is Triton. 
the only large moon of Neptune. Triton is believed to have been a captured moon due to its retrograde orbit, meaning it orbits in the opposite direction as its planets spin. Triton is believed to have been a dwarf planet that got captured by Neptune billions of years ago. I'll be explaining the story in more detail in another video. Triton also shares the same fate as Phobos. Tidal interactions causes it to be pulled towards Neptune slowly after every orbit. After about 3.5 billion years from now, Triton will be ripped apart in Neptune's orbit, forming a beautiful ring system like the one Saturn has today. The Kuiper Belt The Kuiper Belt is home to many small and icy objects. We call them dwarf planets. Though they may be small, some have moons or even multiple orbiting them. Some even have their own little ring system. Pluto and Charon Pluto was the first object in the Kuiper Belt to ever be discovered. Spotted by Clyde Tombow in the year 1930, Pluto was thought to have been the ninth planet back then. But we all know how that turned out. 48 years after its discovery, Pluto's moon Charon was discovered. Charon is not really a moon, but more of a binary companion. It's 1,212 kilometers in diameter, which makes it half of Pluto's size. And due to its size compared to Pluto, the very center between the two objects extends 938 kilometers or 583 miles from Pluto's surface. Pluto has four other moons. They are Nix, Styx, Kerberos, and Hydra. Haumea Haumea is a little special, not only because it's shaped like a potato, lol, but also because it has its very own little ring system. Haumea's faint ring system is thought to have been formed from a giant collision early on in its past. The same collision is also thought to have been responsible for Haumea's fast rotation and two small moons. Those two small moons are Hayaka and Namaka. They're most likely little chunks of ice and rock, only 320 kilometers and 170 kilometers across. Make 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 was thought to not have any moons until 2015 when MK2 was discovered. MK2 is the only moon of Make Make known so far. Estimated to only be around 175 kilometers in diameter, it's nothing more than a boring piece of rock. So let's move on. Eris. Eris is the second largest dwarf planet known so far, and was also the reason Pluto was demoted to a dwarf planet. Eris has one known moon so far. It's named Dysnomia. Dysnomia is estimated to have a radius of 700 kilometers. Dysnomia is 500 times fainter than Eris, meaning its composition would definitely be different from Eris's. Other than that, there's really nothing else to talk about, so let's move on. Quoar. Quoar is known to only have one moon, but a recent observation discovered that it also has a ring system. The ring system is very thin and faint, but what's interesting about it is that it's far beyond Quoar's roach limit. There is more to this ring system that I won't be able to cover in this video, so let me know if you want me to cover that in more detail in another video. Quoar has one moon, named Weiwat. It is believed to be a fragment of Quoar that, that was ejected into an elliptical orbit by some huge collision early on in Quoar's past. It's also believed to have been responsible for maintaining Quoar's ring system. Gong 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 is another dwarf planet in the Kuiper Belt. It only has one known moon so far. It's named Shang Liu. It's estimated to only be around 200 kilometers in diameter. Shang Liu is believed to have been a captured object due to its different color to that of Gong Gong. Other than that, nothing else is really known about it, so let's move on. Orcus Orcus has one moon named Vant. Vant is believed to be 480 kilometers or about 300 miles in diameter, which is half of Orcus's 960 kilometer or 600 mile diameter, making them similar to the Pluto and Charon binary system. Salacia. Salacia is another dwarf planet in the Kuiper Belt. It has one moon named Actacia. Actacia is 300 kilometers or about 190 miles in diameter. It's approximately one third the size of Salacia, making them another binary system. Varda. Varda has one moon named Ilmer. Ilmer is approximately 326 kilometers or about 200 miles in diameter, which makes it about half of Varda's estimated diameter of 700 kilometers or about 430 miles. That makes Ilmer and Varda another binary system. Why? Why is almost everything in the Kuiper Belt a binary system? Come on, map. Anyway, thanks for watching until the end. Also, sorry I got a little mad there. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!